once again very good day to everybody this is uh, transport warehouse logistics and in this class we discuss about cmr convention okay i will actually tell you what is the expansion of cmr okay in the forthcoming slides okay so this is especially for you my dear students and young researchers and you can reach me at dr.christanand.gmail.com at the so before beginning the session i will never ever ever forget to thank god for giving me this opportunity to deliver this useful session to share my knowledge among my fellow national international participants students and young researchers right so in this class we discuss about cmr convention what is the important information that is associated okay then we discuss about bol it's a very very important term in logistics bill of lading okay there are several terms even i was taking the class for uh, intermodal freight transportation okay so that will be uh, discussing so then we'll discuss about what the variable will actually contain okay then we discuss about the considerations when the cmr convention does not apply and then we discuss about um, uh, you know when the cmr convention does not apply when it will apply and when it will not apply okay then we discuss about the very famous transport law act we try to actually compare cmr convention with the transport law act what is better and which is the best okay with regards to procedures and why it's very important to complete a cmr correctly what are the examples what are the practical applications that we'll be discussing and what are the conditions that is necessary for the validation of the cmr document and finally we are going to end this class with the responsibilities of a transporter okay so at regular intervals i'll be giving you some short videos to discuss the knowledge in our topics right so before going into this topic cmr it's a french word once again it stands for convention relative a contract de transport international de merchandises par route okay specially speaking it's a convention relative to the contract of the international transport across the to touristic route or maybe the destination route okay so that is what they are going to discuss so from that only the name comes okay so you should know about this one you as uh, as a responsible uh, guy a person in the logistics field you should know about the expansion of each and everything etir tir carnet okay cmr you should know about this one because whenever you become a responsible engineer okay everybody will ask for it what is this one what is that you should know about this one. okay so it's an international agreement especially for the carriage of goods by the road okay so we'll have uh, at least one country should agree to the cmr convention let me tell you that it came very recently and it is globally accepted even we have like transport law act that was actually enacted and more than this one your cmr convention was globally accepted okay that we'll, we'll discuss about this one okay so we have like road transport across the cars articulated vehicles semi uh, trailers and trailers even that were taking part in this process okay so cmr especially for the successful transport or maybe transit of goods okay with the carriers will be uh, actually going on foot and then we'll go with the liability the modes of complaints okay because whenever you are bringing on to a procedure or maybe a system you should be able to get their feedback associated okay so we have a complaint system that are associated we have claims that are arising from the carriage even okay so we have some provisions national provisions especially for support okay across the countries and in especially in the case of poland it was actually determined by the road transport act okay we have states we have locals regionals nationals even and of course the organizations what you call to be the governmental institutions okay so the carrier is responsible for the actions okay taken by the employees and we have the transport law act especially for this purpose okay it's a contractual basis which is actually renewed maybe every uh, like a one year or maybe two years even okay so that has been carried out with the authorized carriers with the exception of the maritime air and especially horse transport okay that transport which involve horses okay right so this is the cmr convention once again it's an international document we have approximately 26 fields that are associated okay so for every field that has to be we have some certain procedures like jurisdiction okay the arrival the goods the certificates that are associated so you should go with the 
convention agreement and you should carry over these agreements at the beginning okay later part may be during due to during the problem you cannot go in for and uh, the most important part of cmr convention is that it does not apply okay at the later part it applies only in the beginning okay right then we come into bill of lading bol so that's the conclusion a proof for the contract of the carriage under the cmr convention so it comes under the cmr convention okay so it's uh, everything has a legal and as well as evidentiary values everything it has to be supported with the documents okay it is signed and then stamped both by the senders as well as by the receivers even okay so first you are going to sign and stamp it by the sender second we have transshipment pro procedures and then for the for the third we'll go with the recipient who is going to receive them and you are going to you know receive the carrier even okay for everything we have a carbon copy or maybe a back copy that is issued specially for analysis or maybe statistical purpose so for example if you are in including intermodal transportation if you are including different vehicles for transfer of uh, you know products okay so here we will be including variables okay so the variables will be including how the vehicles should be used and how many types of you know goods or maybe carriages that has to be transported from the sender to the receiver okay so everything the details will be verified it will be checked okay for uh, uh, for verification purpose everything should be scanned okay and whatever you are sending should be transparent to the entire system okay so uh, for example if if there is any irregularity or maybe lack of information or maybe loss of bol bill of lading so all costs incurred because of this are borne by the sender so sender has to be more responsible for this one and you cannot say no i am not responsible it uh, during the transit it has happened no not like that everything should be borne by the sender even okay and the carrier you have to go for the checking of this condition all the details has been verified okay when you are trying to receive the goods and uh, as the receiver you have the equal right if it is not verified properly you can send it back to the sender and all the cost should be borne by the sender so sender should be more careful in verifying all the details before sending the consignment okay to the consignment okay so variable will have this one okay and is, this is an example of a variable you'll have the place and date of issue name and the full address with the pin code of the sender okay we'll have the name and address of the carrier of course everything complete details okay and place and date of acceptance of this goods and we have name and address of the recipient even if it involves different transportation everything should be included if it involves any transit that should be included everything with the case of sender and receiver it should be proper here yeah. okay and of course we have a commonly used description that is going to generalize the type of good that you are using and what is the mode of packaging that you will be using okay and how far it will go so the description you should be generalized even everybody anybody who is in the procedure should be able to understand this one what is the gross weight what are the transport related cost everything should be there okay and what are the instructions in order to complete this custom procedures finally the conclusion or maybe a proof of declaration statement that it should go for irrespective of the country that you are going to deliver okay so this it should follow the cmr convention so bill of lading according to the cmr convention okay so uh, cmr convention when it does not apply especially for carriage of postal items okay corpses or maybe cargo belonging to displaced persons okay so if it is not proper if it is not layered on properly cmr doesn't apply and you cannot say no it belongs to the cmr convention no not like that so in between also they will try to back okay they will try to uh, bounce back okay so it's not used when concluding the shipping contracts okay it is it should be done at the beginning at the initial part okay and contracts deemed as this one it does not apply and carrier who does not have to carry out the transport personally so they will go to the supply chain process it will go automatically on its own and you cannot say uh, no even uh, following the cmr convention we do it for our safety purposes not like that it will go according to the uh, layers okay and you should be monitoring them and it follows whether the convention is applicable or not in the beginning itself okay and what are the provisions that will actually apply okay right so this is the transport law act okay so that's a provision of this act for 
transporting this carriage free of charge okay that is actually performed for the international carriage so this was established according to the article 3 of regulation european union 11772010 so from the 2010 standards it was actually established so back in november 2010 so it is it was actually established concerning the rights of the passengers whenever you use the sea or maybe maritime transports okay for transport of goods that will be you know free enough okay for carriage okay so especially for the full fulfillment of this administrative or maybe legal obligations this transport law act was actually established and especially for the uh juris uh, uh, i mean judicative or maybe the administrative procedures it will be very very helpful now we actually compare whether cmr convention or maybe transport law act is uh, actually important for the transportation procedures okay whether you go with the international procedure or maybe the poland based procedure okay so which law is actually essential okay so cmr convention you you know it has its own independent okay order of agreement okay of course the the policies and regulations are quite different but of course they follow the standards but uh, it is independent but transport law act you have to follow the government policies okay accordingly only it will act but here cmr convention it is independent okay so on the grounds of the polish law the parties parties okay especially in the case of carriage is not subject to the convention okay which means that you have to go for independent ways with the case of cmr convention okay so we'll have like agreement and of course a legal force with the relationship even okay so with the case of transport law everything according to the government policies local regional national international government everything it has to comply but cmr convention of course it follows but it is independent okay so both of them will have contractual relations even okay especially with the case of uh, cmr convention everything according to the um, you know national law even and of course even the advantage of using cmr convention is that especially with the case of any complaints any feedback it will immediately try to react just like a private entity okay which is following the uh, you know international procedures okay and that is the reason cmr convention scores better and globally accepted than the transport law act okay so it is also you can say that the cmr convention is strongly liberalized okay and uh, this is the way that uh, we are having a restrictive regulation of complaints in the polish transport law okay so that was actually not included part that was actually excluded okay so we have this cmr convention fine so all of this one has to be done in the beginning okay so this is a contract this is an instruction that is given by the center everything has been verified okay so according to the basic data it's a reservation mechanisms so especially when uh, when there are any irregularities that they happen so you should not uh, hold suitable or maybe you cannot apply for this one okay so there are different number of packages damaged packaging or maybe packaging in poor condition so which means that cmr it will verify it will check okay these are the things these are the uh, uh, possible mistakes that you are actually doing so correct this one and after that the loss will try to appear okay. so pretty much a closely associated standard okay so uh, the reservations also especially for the consignee if you are going to give them okay the, the proof of alleged damage okay so everything we have the cmr document okay so uh, if there is any damage that are associated so you have to make forward that the damage has been you know properly rectified and after that you apply for the uh, you know this agreement okay so we have several experts who are in the entire process we have like insurance policies as well okay especially for recovering the last or maybe the damaged assignments okay fine so now that's another one question whether we have a paper oriented cmr or maybe an online oriented or maybe electronic cmr okay so if you have to follow these procedures with a single device or maybe necessary legal security of course paper oriented would be good okay but in order to globally access okay we should go for paperless or maybe electronic technologies so that would definitely save on your costs okay with the case of cost of printing or maybe sending okay definitely you are going to save on your cost okay 99 percent is who request a copy of cmr everybody they want a digital copy they don't want paper 
paper oriented they want everything okay paperless so that they can store in their system okay and you can also go with the saving in the etr system even okay so that eliminates the need for the supplier to send copies several copies you have to transfer via post or maybe like cargo okay. and these are the examples okay like uh, uh, though it is not legally required to print the copies but of course it is optional even you can go for the copies okay at least you can go for three original copies so that is for the expeditor that is for the recipient and for the transporter okay and most importantly transporter is very very much required to keep the copy in the vehicle okay and for the authorities whenever they ask for they he should be able to present them okay. <coughs> so cmr document it should be well layered okay before the execution of the transport contract okay so as i told you for the expeditor for the recipient and for the transporter very most important for the transporter okay for presenting the documents okay so the transporter definitely he will charge extra money for writing the cmr document so that is normally a taxation document that you will try to prepare okay and here it will be having like date the um, you know sender receiver details everything should be included of course the identity of the transporter address of the transporter the serial number or maybe the siren number okay we will have the date nature of the goods how it is maybe pack packaged okay the the gross weight that is associated okay identity of the expeditor exact address of the bill of lading and of course the identity of the recipient so expeditor recipient sender transporter every details associated with this should be there in the e copy of the cmr or maybe if you are presenting hard copy means you should have three copies okay three original copies okay and of course you have the exact address number of packages packaging mode what are the cost incurred for the transport okay what are the instructions for the customs procedures what are the statements that are associated with the cmr logistics regulations so these are all like the instructions that has to be followed whenever you are going to lay it out for the expeditor recipient sender as well as receipt i mean this receiver fine finally we are going to end this with the transporter okay so transporter definitely for the initial loading or maybe delivery of goods he should be holding useful okay and of course when there is any delay that is associated immediately we will catch hold of the transporter only okay why the delay in the process you show that in the app uh, it is uh, getting delivered within uh, three weeks or maybe two months so why the delay so transporter is very very irresponsible okay or maybe if there is any loss or maybe any damage or maybe any delay okay so that was caused by the uh, neglectful act of the climate okay uh, a defect of goods or maybe unforeseen circumstances the transporter is responsible okay the climate also has used open top vehicles and without covering also so that also is a case where the transporter is responsible so uh, you are you are sending and you will show okay this is the mode of transport that you will be using but if the transporter is not using the required transport so he will he or she will be made responsible for this one for example also mode of packaging if you are specifying in this one packaging mode you are specifying and the packaging has been defective also or maybe inexistent whatever you lay down for example this is the packaging you have established and what you have received is something else different so the transporter is responsible okay so that is the thing so he should be verifying everything okay and labeling or maybe coding is maybe unclear also so something sender is sending correctly but packaging or maybe labeling something it uh, is different means so that has been a problem okay so these are the actual responsibilities of the transport